Good morning. It's Thursday, December 14th, and it's day after Jay Powell Day. Um, I've got so many things to go over that, you know, we'll, we'll go over a ton of charts. I've got a douche of the day for you. Um, and, and I've got several other things to go over. Just know <laughs> we're in a bull market. Um, I, I said it the other day where I was selling, you know, I sold TQQQ, I sold Bank of America. I think I sold into some strength, some weakness, I mean, um, which is not what you want to do. It was tax purposes. Um, some of those stocks I still own in my retirement account. So um, you just want to make sure that you know which direction you're in. The best thing I can show you is QQQ. QQQ has confirmation and it's above the nine day. And like I said before, the Bollinger Bands had cinch up. It's clear we're going for a ride. Um, if you look at seasonality of QQQ, this is what I want to show you as well. Uh, you Not only week of the year, we'll go back. Um, let's go back. Let's put this back to uh, 2004, I guess it'll go back to. Uh, you can see January is good. The last week of this year is good. So you don't want to necessarily look at uh, selling out in December. It, it's a hard thing to do. I've got tax situations. It wasn't my intention to tell you to sell. If you if you actually looked at the newsletter on Sunday, uh, the paid newsletter, anybody that paid, the tools I use and what I expect for the rest of December, it was bullish. Uh, I remain bullish in the short, medium, and long term. Um, yeah, and I went over why. There's several reasons why. The, the trillions of dollars on the sidelines, the seasonality, uh, what I'm doing. And, and I said I'm selling a lot of this stuff basically for, uh, for tax purposes. So if you're not part of the paid newsletter, maybe think about it. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that that would have triggered you to buy anything, would have triggered you to do anything, but it's a solid thing. Look at this 19 years. Um, you can see by far July is the best month of the year. This goes back to 2004. Um, let's bring it back. We'll go back to 2019 because that brings down July a little bit. It brings up November. Um, December here was a, a mean change of um, uh, 52%, but the mean was, uh, let's see. I don't even know. I can't roll over it. But look, 52% in, in, in January. 50, I'm sorry, 58% um, with a mean change of 0.82%. So if you want to buy TQQQ now, probably makes sense. Just hold it until January. You know, if, you, if you'd if you like to, to, to play the NASDAQ a little bit, that may make sense to get your TQQQ. We do have a, a couple of cross-ups. It lost confirmation. I was nervous about it filling a gap down. Worth the profit, even if it does regain as I just buy it again. I could have bought it again at 45.89. Didn't. Right now it's trading at 49. Uh, is it crazy to think that a 50 is a, um, uh, you know, out of the question to buy? No. TQQQ right now is just at the 200 day. So if you think it's extended, uh, this goes back to 2021. These were the highs of the NASDAQ. It's 81. So this could get back to 81. If we continue this bull run, if you want to buy TQQQ, I'm not saying to, to do it. I think it's a trading tool, but I think it's a good trading tool to look at. One thing that I would uh, point, you, point out to you, and I am going to provide these charts in the newsletter, is the, the, the equal weight versus the, um, the, the QQQ. So equal weight just means it's buying, like you know my, my core portfolio in Savvy Trader, uh, it buys one stock of each stock in the NASDAQ 100. So say it owns 100 stock, it owns one stock. That's the equal weight, that's QQQE. QQQ is a market weight, so it takes the market, uh, the, the market cap of the stock and it divides that. So your Apple, your Microsoft, they're gonna be a larger portion of your QQQ uh, than just one stock. So QQQE, over one month, it's up 10%. QQQ is only up 7%. That means the bottom portion of the Qs is actually driving higher 
than the top portion because the top portion is what has driven it. If you go out to one year, look at this. The QQQE is only up 21%. QQQ is up 39, almost 40%. If you go out three years, the equal weight is significantly underperforming. So what this one month chart means is that that lower half is absolutely uh, dragging up. It doesn't mean that the, the, the regular coups are going down and the top seven, the top 10, whatever it is, the top 50 are, are going down. It just means that the bottom portion is actually driving it faster. Um, so that's an important thing to get out there. Uh, one other important thing that I want to say, and by the way, up front, Alex from Spotify. He gave me a great voice message of a thank you. You're welcome. So glad that the stocks in your portfolio are performing the best ones that I or the ones that I recommended. Uh, now, excuse me. While I go about saving the world from bad investment advice, <laughs> I wish I could um, respond on Spotify, but I can't. I really do appreciate the con words. These are the notes. Um, one thing that I did want to point out. I am not going to put this up on screen, but I found a dude uh, from Red Panda Financial. You can Google it. You can find out. It, I think it's Monday. Uh, Monday Market Mondays or something is the guy's famous for. He's got millions of subscribers, millions of people following. You can Google it. The dude charges between three hundred and ten thousand dollars for per month. And when you go to his Market Mondays, typically what he's pointing out is buy and hold. I don't know why anybody would pay three hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars a month, but I'm giving you this crap for free. It's the time of giving. So if you do want to give me $300 or $1,000 or $10,000, whatever you want, my Venmo, my uh, Cash App, my PayPal, you can gift me. Just don't gift me over, I think it's $1,500. <laughs> um, because then, then there's a, some tax implications or something. But uh, yeah, gift me. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. If I made you money, say thank you. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing that you could do, uh, and, and this would probably be even better for you, Rather than give me $400 in a tip, go and sign up for TrendSpider. I mean, honest to God, I would rather have you sign up for TrendSpider. I would rather have you sign up for Seeking Alpha than give me a tip. The reason is that provides you tools and it provides you the tools for you to be successful so that next year, maybe you give me a tip um, You know, when, when you're outperforming the, the S&P. Uh, and I do want to say this too. There, there, there were several people that emailed me uh, after November, and they said, uh, we didn't beat the S&P this year. It doesn't look like we will. It doesn't look like I'm a stock picker. That does not mean give up. That just means you have to adjust your strategy. There were many years where I questioned myself. I got lucky with Apple. I got lucky with Microsoft. I got lucky with a lot of stocks, Amazon. Um, but you have to understand, every year I didn't win. Uh, significantly years I did win, but it wasn't like every year I won. You have to adjust your strategy and you have to adjust your plan. It's not a, oh my God, I bought Apple, you know, for instance, last year, oh my God, I bought Apple in January and it's down. And so I'm not a good stock picker. No, it just means you have to adjust your strategy. That's why December is so important. It's to understand what you did right, what you did wrong, and to move things into a direction that you think is right. If you didn't beat the S&P, if you didn't beat the Qs, move more money into those uh, ETFs, but don't stop picking stocks. The reason is, uh, and this is part of the reason yesterday it was asked, uh, how much should I have in crypto in my, um, in my account? 5%. 5% should be very risky investments, absolutely risky investments. That just means that that 5% could become 100% of, of what your, uh, your, your account was. Um, it could grow that great. You want some risk in your portfolio. Doesn't mean you're always going to win. It just means you want some risk in your portfolio. Now, let's talk about the douche of the day. Douche of the day is Peter Schiff. He said, uh, trading uh, gold right now is trading above 2000 for the first time in history. Uh, it's far more significant than Bitcoin trading above 40000 Gold has completely broken out and it's uncharted territory while Bitcoin still needs to rally more than 60% from here to make a new high. Peter Schiff is down 7% in six days. Eight days, sorry, eight days. Yeah, douche. Do not listen to a douche on the internet. That's all that means. Do not listen to a douche on the internet. Honest to God, the douches on the internet will lead you down a path you have to understand. 
Uh, if you're going to listen to somebody, you have to do your research and understand what it means. Dude was probably short gold. You know, or he's, his boomer is showing, one or the other. Stock futures rise, 10-year yield drops below 4% as pal fever continues. That's the, the article of the day. Uh, honest to God, um, what j Powell did, did yesterday was just the Fed kept the rate the same. But what he it wasn't just like any other meeting. He said they expect the rates to go lower. And that made the 10-year move below 4%. That made stocks rally. Uh, they're pushing things back up. Uh, if things get too fast, um, you could see a, 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 reignition, a reignition of inflation. Uh, that would be the danger. The Dow hit an all-time high. Amazing face for it being rally. It was above 37,000 for the first time. It's continued higher this morning. Uh, going back to 1982, this is Gunjin. Uh, she's great. You should follow her on Twitter. Gunjin, uh, going back to 1982, the S&P returned an average of 19% in the 12 months after um, federal funds rate peaked. So if we are at a peak, you still have room to go. S&P returned on average 19%. We're not up 19%. Uh, let's look at SPY because we're we're not up 19% from when the the, the, the rates peaked. Um, let's just get rid of, I'm going to keep that in there. I don't know. That's probably a weekly. Um, but if the, the rates peaked and, uh, you know, when they started, uh, started halting, what was it? July? I think it may have been August they started halting. I mean, that, the S&P was at 443. So let's just take a look at where 19% might be. Uh, let's move this down here. We'll shrink this down because if we're looking at 19%, say it, say they stopped in August with the August, you know, say it was 443. Uh, 19%, that's 19. Oof, we're still going up. I mean, 19% is way up here at 524. 5,000, you still got a long way to go. So do not think that this absolutely could, the, the rally could continue to run just based on a couple of things. Uh, I will include the chart for QQQE versus QQQ in the, um, the, the newsletter. I will include an, uh, uh, a chart as well of RSP versus SPY. Um, that's a big one as well. WBA, uh, Walgreens, B, Walgreens Boots. Um, they shot up yesterday. This has been, I, I didn't include this in the, the, the scans because I'm just not a fan of this company, but you're up 20% over 12 days since the algorithm got you in there. Again, if you want this algorithm, if you go to Walgreens and you love Walgreens and your local pharmacist is your best friend, um, the algorithm could have made you 20% over the last 12 days. I'm just not a fan of this company, but I will include um, a, an article, Walgreens gains amid reports it's restarting talks on boot sale. Uh, well, it, 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 the ironic thing is the screenshot that I took that I'll put in the newsletter as well. It, it, it's got that sale part, and then right underneath it, Walgreens slips as Moody's cuts rating to junk. That was December 11th. So that was... Um, back here. Yeah. You went down and it looked like the 200 day was going to provide resistance. You just shot up. I mean, do I think that this $31 gap up here is in, in play? I don't think so. I mean, if they start really looking at selling, yeah. Uh, Bank of America and other financials ripped. This is at 32. This is up almost 2% today. Look at Bank of America in the algorithm. The algorithm, it is crazy. And I pointed this out. You have another MACD cross up. This is 23% in this name. I said buy this under 30. It is at 32. I sold at about $30.90. Um, I still hold it in retirement, but I did sell uh, out a good amount of this um, at $30. I, I regret it. I'm not looking back and saying, oh my God, I missed the run. No, you've got gaps down below here. Am I buying it at this level? It's a little bit, I mean, it's not crazy expensive, but if banks continue to have problems with some of their uh, long dated bonds, I, I just think that this may come back and we'll go over DPST in a little bit, but the banks just had a crazy good rally. And Bank of America is one of them. I sold out Bank of America. Uh, I sold out TQQQ. TQQQ, I sold out, I think, at 44, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, it's at 48 right now. So I missed out on a good you know, 10% run. I didn't rebuy it here. 
I should have rebought it at 45 um, just three days ago. I should have rebought it. Should have taken my profit, rebought it. But I didn't. I didn't believe in this rally. Uh, you know, again, TQQQ, when I sold it, it was a 40% gain. I said, I'm just not sure of this rally. I'm just not 100% sure. I was losing sleep. Doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean you get out of a rally, um, uh, you know, just because you're you're in the middle of a rally. You have to get out when you start losing sleep, when you start worrying about stuff. That's where you get out. Bank of America, it was a tax situation. I needed to get out. I got out. Am I regretting it? Eh, maybe a little, but not, not, not much. Apple closed at an all-time high. Uh, this is a stock I will include the great eight in the newsletter today. I did a lot of work last night. I will include charts of the great eight and weekly charts of the great eight. I will include everything that I think is a good buy right now in the newsletter. There are several of the great eights that have significant room to run and reasons to run. So the great eight, it's not dead. You just have to be careful about which ones you pick. Apple buys a ton of stock back. Do I think this one's going higher? Absolutely, I think it's going higher. I think it hits 220. Does it beat SPY? Does it beat QQQ? I don't know. Does it beat the bottom half of the Qs so you should get equal weight? I don't know. I am sticking in Apple. I am probably taking some profits up here, specifically in my retirement account where there's not a tax event because I do see... This, this uh, August 2nd, 2023, this is August. If you go back to a long term, I think it goes back to 2021. Um, yeah, this is the weekly. All-time highs in Apple. Look, I mean, it's just continuing to go. I'm going to trim a little bit. I'm going to buy maybe at 195. I'll trim a little bit at 197. Doesn't mean that you get out completely. It just means, you know, for psychological reasons, sell a little bit. Mara and all other crypto went nuts. Uh, Bitcoin is back over, let's see, um, BTC. I think it's back over 44,000. Um, let's see. Uh, it is at 42. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's up 2.71% today. Uh, Mara was up. Mara is uh, down 0.36, but it's at 16 it's at 16. Uh, SoFi, which I said was a $10 stock. I think this one was up 10% yesterday. Um, it is up another 1.9%. It broke its 200 day. So it, it, it's, it's now got the, 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 the momentum to probably go to $10. It's trading at $9.11. So if you want that little gain, you can get it. Just understand doesn't mean that it got cheaper. <laughs> it means it got more expensive. The forward PE is 117. So far this year, this is up 93%. Uh, it, it's 52-week high is $11.07. Its target range is $9. The most recent, uh, e Barclays, said equal weight at $8. This just gets ripping on, on basically when the market takes off, retail comes in, and they start buying. Look at that spike in the afternoon. That spike in the afternoon, your, your RSI is at 74, doesn't mean that you get in. If you're in this, I think you wait until 10. But if you want to get out and you have a significant gain, get out. Uh, I like that one. Upstart, we're going to uh, include this. There are too many scans for me, by the way, to include in a podcast. So the newsletter is where you will get the scans. Uh, if you have a trend spider, you can do the charts yourself with my algorithm. You can take a look at those. But here, Upstart, uh, it is up another 4% today in the algorithm. We had a buy here November uh, 28th with um, Upstart. This is up 73% in 15 days, 73%. It's risk on. Risk on again. I mean, all of these names. Adobe. Um, Adobe. By the dip, I mean, that, that's kind of what I said. Uh, I think I wrote that down. Um, time to buy the dip. They got it conservatively. Oh, their, their things were last night. So Adobe, you're up. You're down 4.9%. Buy it under 600. It is at 598 right now, 596. I think 586 was really kind of where it was um, capitulating. And, and you can see, let's move. Um, let's look at this. We're going to move this back here a little bit the the volume shelf is not really there um this may be why it's kind of sitting around 600 i think if you break 583 there's no volume but the volume is really being brought up to this 600 level i think you're okay 
Um, here's the article that, that Adobe, oh no, that's the article on this. I don't, have, I'll include an article on Adobe from, uh, from, a thing that they, they just said they got it conservative. Um, the last time they, they are always conservative. Uh, they, they said it looks like, uh, they're going to spend more money on the Figma deal. Uh, I just think it's an opportunity to buy. Nobody's doing AI better. Uh, in images than Adobe and Adobe just wins on pretty much everything. Um, it's, it's, you know, a, again, it's not a cheap stock. That's the problem that you have is it's not a cheap stock. You go and look, you look the PE is 52, the forward PE is 30. It is up 85% this year. They don't have a dividend. They are making money. They are making tons of money. Target price is 632. Um, we just got one reiterated from BMO Capitals. They moved their price target from 670 to 690. Again, it's a solid stock. This one probably should be in the core portfolio. The only reason it isn't is I'm not an Adobe user. I'm an Apple user, so I have a Final Cut Pro. I have other things, um, Affinity, things like that. Buffett uh, bought more Oxy. Now, we, we've talked about Oxy. I thought I was uh, trimming Oxy. I haven't trimmed Oxy. The Oxy today is up 2.5%. We just got a cross up at 57 So my sellout of Exxon uh, may have come too soon. My sellout of Oxy for a loss. I'm going to hold on to this a little bit longer because I don't want to sell into, into, um, into weakness. I want to sell into strength. So if it comes up here to about 58, 59 and I can pull the trigger, I'll probably get out of this one. I don't know that I necessarily want to be in energy going forward because I do think in the new year, and I've said this, it's not that I don't believe in energy. I just believe in the tech stocks more. Energy has been a, a, a rather high flyer. And if you take a look at XLE, yeah, it's hurting right now in the short term. That's a four hour chart. Uh, but if you took, take a look at the weekly, Energy is still up there. I mean, it's still high. Uh, the 50 day is just kind of moving forward, just, you know, there. The, the 200 day is still moving positive, but it's not ripping like it was. So, in my mind, I just want to basically stay with energy in some names, but I probably will trade in and out of them. That's the only reason I haven't pulled out of energy completely. I will include a um, screenshot of DPST like I took it yesterday, but the big one that I want to point out to you with DPST, this one is up 10% today, okay? This is up 106% in the algorithm. It's crazy the amount that this is up, but what I want to point out to you is a weekly chart, and I will include this in the newsletter. This is September 2020 to March 2021. The DPST was up 724% during that time, okay? Right now, you're looking in just uh, one month, three weeks, you're up 125%, so it's just under two months. Doesn't mean we don't have another rally like this going on. You could come up just under this 200-day. I don't think that you're going to reach the 200-day, but you could come up to $200, which is another 100% gain. Again, there's risk in this. This is a triple levered ETF. I would rather trade it on a four-hour than I would on a, um, on a, a weekly. But just understand, this is a long-term play on the, the recovery of the banks. We'll go over some of, uh, you know, one bank that I noticed yesterday is Schwab. Schwab is now at $68. $68. Remember, the, the algorithm said buy here at 51. And I said buy here at 51. You got gaps above. You just roared through the 200-day. If we go and we look at a weekly on this one, this is right at the 200-day. The, the highs up here before the banking crisis were 85. You've still got room to run in this name. The all-time highs are back here in, in January 2022. It was at 94. You've still got room to run in that name. So DPST is a, a solid, solid play. Albemarle, which came up earlier in the week as a, a cross-up. This was one that came up at 123. Um, and, and let's take a look, uh, 123 on December 4th, and it came up again on December 7th. We'll just take the December 7th one, 16%.
So again, if you want my algorithm, sign up for TrendSpider. These are names that I just put in the newsletter, but it's up 17%. And that's not eight days because I went past it. But um, again, Albemarle, Albemarle went crazy. Um, Boeing is at a 52-week high. Remember when I said buy Boeing under 200? Anybody listen? I said it's going to get some resistance here at the 210 mark where um, where the 200-day the was. It got some for a day. Shot right through it. Still has confirmation. It's at 251. So again, you can use my algorithm to, to just do money like this. Uh, Shea Boulard, which I, I like and I tell you all the time, follow him on, um, on Twitter. He has some great, great content. Ever heard of the PEG ratio? It's Peter Lynch's go-to metric. Um, that is a score under one. It, it hints at a bargain while uh, over two might be a bit too pricey. Let's take a look where the great uh, Magnificent 7 are. Uh, Apple 3. That's why I'm trimming a little bit. Uh, Microsoft 2.4. That one hasn't participated in the rally, but it already should have. And, and in fact, the, the chart that I'll, I'll, I'll show in the newsletter for Microsoft, while well, we're talking about Microsoft, let me just show it. Because this one, from a standpoint of uh, it, it got an upgrade, $600 in three years. The green line uh, is what that might look like. So you could follow that green line and, and that would be $600 in three years. Now, that, that, that's a significant, significant move. That right there, the yellow line is $600. So within three years, if you want that trajectory, Microsoft is your play. Does it get there? Who knows? But like Shea Boulard says, the, the PE is 2.4, Tesla 1.6, Amazon. This is the great, the, the, the Magnificent 7. You'll see um, the, the Googles, the Metas, the NVIDIAs, uh, the Amazons, and the Teslas have room to run. So in the newsletter, I will post that, uh, all of those charts, and you'll see the, the weekly charts that I do. Um, for those that, that want to buy BABA on the dip, um, this is a good article. Can Alibaba regain its lost crown of, of uh, commerce? They go over a, a, a kind of a analysis of BABA and PDD. I like the article. I'll include it in the newsletter. Um, and yeah, like I said, the great eight will be in the newsletter, so you'll be able to see it. Uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, Costco earnings today. After the bell, Costco has earnings. This has been a stock that has just gone crazy. And you can see when we were here in the uh, the algorithm at 533, this is a crazy expensive stock. Even at 533, it was expensive. You're up 16% over 43 days just in this algorithm. And you still have confirmation. You're still Bollinger Band cinched up a little bit and went for a higher ride. Uh, what do I expect from Costco? I don't think they're going to raise the membership uh, fee. Uh, that would be the, the biggest catalyst of this. That would take this to $700. It's expensive. Understand it is expensive. I will include, um, some of the, the, the newsletter from some of the, uh, in the newsletter, some of the seeking alpha stuff, but it's got a PE of 45. It's got a forward PE of 37. I'd rather see you in Walmart, <laughs> Uh, than Costco right now. And Walmart is part of the, the core portfolio, so it's a solid play. Um, the, you know, Costco, it's just, the, if you've ever gone to a Costco on a Saturday, you know. I mean, they make their money off of uh, the membership fees. It's crazy. It's it's a crazy, crazy place. I love Costco. Um, but they, are, they do have earnings. I don't expect it to pop, but if they raise that membership fee, expect it to be $700 by the time you wake up tomorrow. Um, K Spears. Hi, Gary. Love the show. Thoughts on PODD as a long-term play. Happy holidays. I don't even know what PODD is. Insulate. Uh, so a long-term play. Short-term play. It looks like you've got a great bounce here um, in the algorithm. The algorithm had you in at 137. Uh, you're up 51% over 42 days. Great play if you had it. You can see this is a great example. Look at the stock going up. Uh, and the RSI really hasn't moved that much. It's up here in the overbought territory the entire time. You just have a golden cross. Now, let, let's look at long term because you asked about long term. We move to weekly. Uh, you are about to have a death cross. <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of, you know, this is where you kind of get into, okay, where, where am I? Uh, it's down. Let's see, P-O-D-D. -D. Let's look it up on, on FinViz. 
uh, and then I'll look it up on Seeking Alpha. But PODD, their PE is 122. It's still expensive. I mean, God, it's expensive. It's down 30%, but that's still expensive. They are a medical device company, so it's healthcare. Um, insiders are selling at 164 uh, in decent size. I mean, they're selling at 271 back here in June. Um, they were selling at, at rather large ones. That's a director, four million bucks. Um, their market cap is, let's see, they're in the S&P 500, so it's 14 billion. They got enough shares outstanding. Um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, medical device stuff because I think you just open yourself up to um, a bunch of uh, potential lawsuits and stuff. And you can see PODD at 208. They're saying uh, uh, hold, Wall Street hold the or buy. The, the quant says hold. Um, the most recent analysis from January to February, it's not really covered that much, but it's hold. This dude said hold and insulate. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily enter this one. What would worry me about this one is just the 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 um, the, the PE and the forward PE. Um, but medical devices, a, again, you know, look at the the most recent Morgan Stanley. They they raised their price target to two thirty four. You're trading at two oh four. You're thirty nine percent below your fifty two week high of three thirty five. Um, October Jeffries hold to buy at 240. It does look like that 230 to 240 is probably the most recent um, ones in August. Robert Baird outperformed to neutral at 219, and you're trading at 204. You probably have some upside um, of this one, but I don't know what brought it down. What I would do, um, uh, K Spears, is I would probably look at at uh, August, some news articles in August, why'd it go down? And if it went down, I always say any reaction in the market is an overreaction and you've gained confirmation. I just don't know long-term if this makes sense because, you know, again, the, the weekly you're looking at a, a death cross, you're looking at it under the 50 day here uh, on a monthly basis. Um, so, I don't know if there's more downside, but again, that, that's a clear indication. Any reaction in the market is an overreaction. Terrence uh, from uh, Spotify wants me to look at Tesla. I've looked at Tesla a bunch. Um, we don't have really have a four-hour cross-up on this one. In fact, the algorithm just got you out with a 14% gain. Right now, you're up one86 this is part of the, um, the, the, the great eight that I did on a weekly, and I'll include it in the newsletter. I still think it has room to run. The problem that you have with Tesla is the margins are shrinking, increased costs, and perhaps lower demand may weigh on the stock. That's it. But if interest rates are going down, uh, that could be a spur for people to get new cars. So I, I do think that you have room to run on this one. I just think, it, again, it's, it, if, they're, if their margins are going to continue to go down, Terrence, I would be extremely worried uh, uh, about potential. You know, they, I, I read yesterday they just got the approval for the Mexico one. Uh, Elon, on the last interview that he did, said they are further along than people know on a low cost, meaning $20,000, $25,000 electric vehicle that will get uh, built in Mexico and they're starting to break ground in Mexico. Look at how fast they put up factories. Uh, Shanghai went up in like a year. Uh, I think um, Texas went up in like nine months. Berlin went up in a year because of regulation stuff but I, I still think Tesla is a good one I just I love the car and, and and by the way we went over it yesterday how it, it crazy the news went with a quote-unquote recall of two million vehicles BS it's a software update it was nothing those of us that own Tesla it was absolutely nothing it's not like a recall a safety recall or anything they make you jiggle the wheel a little bit more that's all it is um, Alex Tamoya Alex sent me that nice uh, voicemail message. Is high debt and low profit the best indicator that a company is headed to bankruptcy? In the Fidelity app, I look at total debt capital and profit margin. What's your favorite indicator that you use? I don't typically play the bankruptcy deal. I, I think you're always in danger of playing the, the bankruptcy rule. Um, the, the favorite indicator that I use, and, and I say this all the time, it's the MACD. 
Um, the MACD is, is, you know, what my algorithm's based on. If that's the indicator that you're talking about, um, I, I, you know, MACD is, is it. My algorithm's based on the MACD. Um, if you're part of the paid newsletter, uh, Alex, there's some really good um, uh, paid newsletters on the MACD, uh, specifically some of the tools that I use, um, tax loss harvesting. If you just look at the paid ones, uh, what this week told us about the market, I've got quite a bit of paid newsletters, I think. Oh, I've got to put more in the paid. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit. I've got to put more in the paid. I, I just have to mark them. I haven't marked them well enough. But I'll, I'll, I'll put them in the paid there. Uh, the, the My Trend Spider setup, this one looks at the MACD, and it even gives you some links as to why I set up my uh, my algorithm as part of the MACD. And then you've got the indicators that I use. I mean, this is the paid newsletter, um, the indicators that I use. You'll see it. Back in 2020, myself and my trading partner were looking at a charting program that would allow us to backtest. That's when we found Trade and TrendSpider. Um, you can look at all that stuff. But this is all the indicators that I use, all of that stuff. Uh, if you listen to the podcast regularly, you can figure it out. If you don't want to pay for the newsletter, you can figure it out. I, it's not like I'm putting something in the newsletter that I don't specifically say on the podcast. I don't just put it. The, the, the newsletter is just a condensed form. Again, I think it's $80 a year. I'm going to raise that price at some point in time once I clean that, that homepage up. But I will absolutely be putting things into condensed form in the newsletter. It's not like I don't say this stuff on the air. But it's just in a more condensed, more um, kind of concise uh, portion to look at it. I look at things like that as a way to save time. 80 bucks for a year and it saves you like uh, you know six hours of listening to me to, uh, for, the, for the week. Yeah, that's a time. Varun, rocket shares pop today. Can you please look into this uh, for short and long-term prospects? Thanks in advance. Varun, that's from the newsletter. And if you've replied to the newsletter, just put a comment down. Uh, I'll look at it. But Rocket Mortgage, I'm a fan of Rocket. I, I think they did really well during the pandemic. And you can see in the algorithm here, short term, um, you're up, what, 72%? In 48 days, this is just one of those ones that was beaten down. If we take a look at a long term, am I buying it here? Probably not. It, it still doesn't have a 200 day on the weekly. Um, and that's just because it was an IPO. And you can see why I don't like IPOs a lot of the time. You can see this started trading out at 23. You're at $12 right now. You went all the way down to $6. They got hurt uh, because everybody who needed to refinance already refinanced and, and this was just an overblown stock they're still losing money their forward pe is 35 their price to sales of 0.47 it's not horrible um is this company going to make money i don't know ubs the most recent one uh they they resumed coverage they said sell their price target was 850 and they're trading at 8 1181 i do think it's run too much. I wouldn't get into this in the short term. You can see right here, back here in um, in August where it peaked out at about this price. You could be looking at a double top. Uh, it's up 5% today. Uh, I don't see any kind of catalyst from an earnings perspective. That's going to be out in February. Your RSI, you're specifically, you're way overbought. Um, short term, I wouldn't buy it. I, I would trade this on a shorter term level if you wanted to. But right now, it's just, it doesn't mean that it's not going to continue to go. I mean, you know, the MACD is flying up there. Your RSI is at 92. You can't get more oversold, overbought than this one. Uh, the, 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 the Bollinger Band cinched up right here, right at about nine, and it moved to 12. So I would look at some indicators like the Bollinger Bands, um, you know, use the four hour algorithm if you want. The four hour algorithm, it works. You know, stock, rocket mortgage, you lose 5% over uh, what? How many positions? Um, 34 positions. Now, that doesn't include this current run. So the algorithm probably puts you in a positive state over two years. Once this run is done, um, uh, if you just bought and held Rocket Mortgage two years ago, you're down 30%. So the algorithm works. So I, I don't know the, the the prospect of Rocket, but I do know that that the algorithm works. I would trade that one. I wouldn't necessarily own it, and, and I wouldn't own it until it makes money. 
Uh, bullish bites might want me to look at Walmart. Walmart had a cross up here at 152. Your RSI is at 46. I've said, you know, Walmart is is part of the core portfolio. I bought and held it, and I like it. It's it's up at its highs. I mean, its 52 week high was 169. That's only 10 percent. You're 10 percent down from your 52 week highs, and that was back here in in November. Um, you know, it just continued its way up. It's pulled back. So, do I think you should buy it right now? You had a cross up here. You've got this gap based on earnings. Um, you know, between 160 and 168. This gap on earnings, any reaction in the market is an overreaction. You had two other buys where it looked like we were coming to fill that gap at 158 and 154. You're at 152. I don't think you're going much lower. I think 150 is probably the the the, the bottom of this one. If you look at a weekly, though, you're just at the 50-day, and it likes trading around the 50-day. If you get to the 200-day on this one, which is at about 140, you just add to it. You just add to it. This is a buy and hold. Remember, I'm not playing options. I'm not playing short term. I'm just looking at buy and hold. So bullish bites, I think that's a solid one. We had so many scans that crossed up. I, I'm literally looking at probably about 40 or 50 uh, stocks that scanned up. Um, you know, in the core portfolio, we had Apple, another MACD cross up. It's going for for all time highs again. It's up 0.67%. It's going to cross 200. Eli Lilly, we talked about this one being kind of over overbought a little bit. Um, you can see, I think under 600 is, is a fine long term value, even though it's a high valuation. Even though it's a high valuation, it's down 2% today at 583. If you get to this um, the, this 200-day at 560, just load up the Brinks truck on this one. Um, you still have issues with Manjaro, uh, with some of this stuff, but I think you're fine with that. XLY. I've said, hey, you know, XLY underperforms XLK. Well, it, it you know, you're in this run. It's another MACD cross-up. Look at how high that over over that RSI is. The RSI is just overbought, but it hasn't made a difference. It's continued to run. Uh, at some point in time, that comes down. Simon Property Group. I talked about this one at about, I think, 105 or so. Yeah, it's in the core portfolio. On 1031 in my podcast, I said uh, you should buy this at 109. It's got a solid 5.75% dividend. I even said he, up here to run a little bit. Uh, but it's got confirmation, pulled back a little bit, just kind of traded in that range. Now it's gone for another run. It's gone for another run. Let's see. And, and you can see all these notes. 109, you're up 30% over 43 days. And you've got a 5% dividend. And you got paid in that time with that 5% dividend. Um, Devon Energy has a cross up. This is one that I'm slightly worried about. It has not participated in this rally. I don't want to sell it because I didn't want to sell into weakness. And you can see, obviously, the last couple of buys have been weakness. $44. The problem that you have with Devon Energy is Energy A is just getting weaker and weaker. The PE is only at 7. It's got a nice 6.68% 6, 6 dividend. That, that's continuing to go down. They're paying less and less. That's why this one's going down. This used to be an 11% dividend. So the, the dividend's going down. If we look at this one on um, on uh, Seeking Alpha, uh, you can see everybody's saying buy. After years of strong upside, Devon Energy deserves more. Yeah. Occidental Devon upgraded to overweight at Morgan Stanley. That was just uh, earlier this week. I, I continue to hold this one. I, you know, it's not hope and pray. The fundamentals justify holding on to this one. Again, I think it's fifty. I think fifty is your magic number on that one. Uh, Amazon. We have a cross up on Amazon, and I'm just gonna, I'm going to stop here in a couple of minutes. But Amazon, uh, this one, if we look at a weekly that I will put in the uh, in the newsletter, you can see we're thirteen percent from a volume shelf. That's going to get pulled up to that volume shelf. And I'll include more details in the in the newsletter. But that one's a great one. Levered ETFs. We, we went over DRN, which is the real estate DPST, UDAO, UMDD, URTY. All of those are bullish uh, levered ETFs that just had cross-ups. That means we're going to continue into this market. This is what Tom, Tom somebody said it on the, the YouTube chat. Tom Lee was right. Tom Lee said, hey, November is going to be crazy. He then went on and said the first couple of weeks of December will be choppy and it will be nuts. 
But the second half of December, we expect to see a rally into January and that rally continue. I am on Tom Lee's side. I continue to think that we see that. Energy names, by the way, I have about 16, 17 energy names that just went up um, into a uh, into a bullish uh, stance. Uh, so I'll include those in the newsletter. In fact, Boyle. Boyle just went into another bullish stance. This one's up 1.52%. I don't think you buy it until it gains confirmation. It still doesn't have confirmation. But there's some solid, you know, Cleveland Cliffs I sold out of. Shouldn't have sold out of this one. This one's up 3% today to 1866. So I think I took a slight loss uh, on this one. So I'm I'm restricted from buying it again for um, 30 days, I think. Uh, I've got to take a look at it, but this is one that I would get back into. It, it, Costco is down 1%, by the way, today uh, before their earnings. It's just run a lot. Spider Sectors, uh, XLRE, which is real estate. Um, this one, Cross Up. Uh, this is another cross up, which means we're going into another bullish rally. You can see the RSI has just been overbought, but you are at 33 here. You're at $40 right now. This is a spider sector over a, a month's time frame that's up 21%. And, and part of the reason is you look at the weekly, it's just been beaten down. You're just at the 200 day. Um, uh, XLY, we went over XLU. Uh, I've said XLU is, is one of the beaten down territories. Um, this is one of the spider sectors that's completely beaten down. You can see $61 right there. And that was on November 15th. So it was one month ago. You're up 7% in XLU. Now, if you go to a weekly on this one, you can see this is the chart that I said on the weekly. Uh, this was, Hey, if you're at the bottom here, I said, if this is the actual trend that you're looking at at the bottom and it almost timed it perfectly, um, yeah, you're in a rebound now. You're just at the 200 day. So it means you're in the middle of this range. Doesn't mean you're automatically going back here to uh, $77, but at $66, you can probably take it. And utilities, again, utilities are for income. That's what they're used for. XLB. This is materials, I think. This includes like things like, uh, yeah, it's the material sector. Cleveland Cliffs, XLB, solid move on the algorithm. Uh, and we got another leg up with XLP, which is consumer staples, I think it is. Um, yep, consumer staples. And you can see, if you want to see what's in the, these uh, things, go over to Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is free. Just click on the link. You don't have to do it to, you know, you can see all the holdings in this stuff. Procter and Gamble, Costco is in there. Costco and Procter and Gamble make up 25% of XLP. Um, so if you want Costco, look at XLP. This is what I said to the people who said they can't pick stocks. Well, find stocks that you like and just buy the spider sector that, that includes them. And, 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 you know, maybe you don't pick the stock that's in there, but maybe some of the other stocks actually do well in that sector. That's why I say XLK, I think is a solid, solid name. Uh, XLF, talked about financials. XLF has just been on fire. Um, you know, here, XLF, 30, uh, this is what I said earlier. Yeah, it's crazy how much this one has gone up. You got all the bullish stuff. Remember, Linktree is where you sign up for everything. If you've seen all the bullish stuff that my algorithm can do, uh, rather than tip me $500 or pay me $10,000 like Red Panda, uh, sign up for TrendSpider. Get the tool for yourself. What you do is you sign up here. You go over to TrendSpider, and we can go and look. The plans and pricing, it's $400. Uh, it's uh, $397.80. Skip the seven-day trial if you listen to me. If you want the seven-day trial, it's going to cost you a lot more. It's going to cost you $780. But if you think my algorithm is worth it, if you think my watch list and my scanners are worth it, if you think everything that I do is worth it, buy TrendSpider. Just sign up. Uh, that's the best thing that you can do. Rather than tipping me, go over there and sign up for TrendSpider. Uh, if you don't think you want to do charting and you just want to do basic stuff, I would sign up for Seeking Alpha. It's $189. This link gets you a $50 coupon. Oh, by the way, once you sign up for TrendSpider, email me. 
uh, because I have to email you the links to get my algorithms, charts, and uh, watch lists. But if you just, if you don't want to do charting, go over to Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is just the best tool for you to find. In, fi in fact, Bullish Bytes signed up for Seeking Alpha, and he was finding stocks, and he's like, oh, my God, look at these stocks that I found through the quant stuff. Uh, yeah, he's done that. It, it, I use uh, Weeble as my sports betting tool. Uh, use use this link to get Weeble. Uh, I put a thousand dollars in there at the beginning of the year. I am at thirty four forty five right now, three thousand four hundred and forty five dollars. That's how well I've done using the algorithm. It's basically been betting on triple levered ETFs and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing that you really need to do is sign up for the newsletter. Uh, it is the best tool. If you listen to me on a, a daily or weekly or even every now and then, get the newsletter. It's free. The weekend, you don't have to sign up for the weekend paid one. It's just a consolidation of everything that I say. Um, it, it is tools that I use. But don't think that you absolutely need it. But the free one is the key because if you're listening to this, you can look at all the charts that I talk about. If you are paying anything more than $25 a month for your phone service, click on the visible link. You will get visible phone service for $25 a month, but you get $20 off your first month, so it's $5. Your, uh, if you don't wanna be regulated, I have the $25 plan, I find it perfectly fine. Uh, if you don't wanna be uh, rate limited, $35. Gets you, you know, much faster speeds, everything. I haven't needed it. I go out walking every day. Uh, I put, you know, my headphones on. I stream podcasts, stream CNBC, stream anything that I want. But that's a great, great uh, tool. Uh, you know, great, great thing to have. Uh, anything else? Yeah, Tesla. I mean, this the link tree has everything. And remember, it's the time of year to give. Do I have to put a song on for you? I got my Venmo. I got my PayPal. I got my Cash App. But honestly... If you're going to tip me like 500 bucks, uh, I certainly appreciate it. I would much rather have you have a tool, you know, to get something for your own money. Uh, I, I do. I don't make $500 from uh, if you sign up for TrendSpider. So you can sign up for TrendSpider and give me 100 bucks if you want, or you can do Seeking Alpha, one or the other. But again, I, I, I want you to start the year with tools. And, and I want you to end this year with understanding where you're at. Things you did wrong, things you did right. Savvy Trader, if you are not uh, journaling your trades, Savvy Trader is a paid one. <clears throat> um, if you want to follow my core portfolio, you absolutely can. I have two portfolios. I have uh, a trading portfolio, which is $25 a month, uh, but I don't do much in there. I, I will tell you, I don't know that it's necessarily worth it. It's up. Um, you know, I'm doing really very well in that one, but I don't keep track of it as much as I should. Uh, the core portfolio I do keep track of, and this one is absolutely fantastic. You should go and follow this one. Um, this has, you know, say say you're not a stock picker, but you want to pick some stocks and you want to invest in stocks, and this is your first time doing it. This is a great list of 34 positions that you can pick, and I don't think you're going to wind up going poor. You know, something like Disney. Disney, you may lose some money on. Uh, you know, I was explaining to my dad last night about how uh, Disney gets paid by the cable companies and that is never coming back. And so they have to make that that cash flow up somewhere. And I just nobody knows where that cash flow is going to come from. So the stock may not go up, but you're not going to go down to 40. You shouldn't go down to 40. If you go down to 40, we got a real problem. But if you want a high flyer, Tesla's one. You know, you can take a look at uh, some of the, uh, we'll look at the all-time gainers here. Um, look at Uber. Since I bought it, it's up 46%. It's at 61. I don't think that's a crazy price for Uber. You know, Costco, uh, we're up 21%. Uh, Simon Property got up 29%. Um, you know, Pan W, this is a $350 stock. The $250 that I said Pan W was worth, it's now $350. Um, honest to God, that one has just been outperforming. Uh, even Amazon up 18%. I've got some losers in here. I've got SMCI that I'm down 10% on because I put that purchase in at, at a bad time. Um, but it does, you know, again, this is a hundred uh, shares of a stock that I just buy when they get added. I don't time these buys. This is to show you, you can make money over this, uh, just buying one share of a stock if you want. Um, you know, at, at particular times, some of these were just timed at, at the wrong time. You know, Tesla, I'm down 8%. 
I haven't traded it. Just went in there in June as part of the the, the core portfolio. It's down eight percent. Devon Energy down eight percent. This just went in in June as part of the core portfolio. Walmart, same thing. It's down one percent. Went in in June as part of the core portfolio. All of these just went in at certain times during the core portfolio. But I would urge you take this time at the end of the year to to set up a system where you can journal your trades and learn so that next year in December, you take a look back at what you did and what you did right and what you did wrong. If you, did, if you didn't beat the indices, like you didn't beat SPY or you didn't beat QQQ, throw more money into those at the end of the year and, and take less money for your trading and your stock picking. And as you get better at stock picking and trading and, and you have more winners, you can put more money into those. You know, to get the, the the Peter Lynch quote, um, you know, that Warren Buffett used, um, you know, holding on to your losers is like watering your weeds. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, OK, uh, I am done. I will talk to you guys tomorrow from Atlanta. I will. I'm flying back. So I will talk to you from Atlanta. OK, Every take morning care, I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. and fears.